Okay, so doing the research for these videos, and I have the links down below, comes across, I come across the sex hormone binding globulin, and it's very confusing. How does it work? And so I had a few email questions about it to please clarify what the sex hormone binding globulin is because it could be your best friend and your worst enemy. So enjoy. Thank you. Another one, this is Dr. Jawad. Three things, please. Hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button, and leave a comment. And if you find this information valuable, please share with a friend because I always, I always appreciate a growing audience. Over the years, my YouTube page has grown tremendously and I greatly appreciate it. Yes, I answer those comments the best of my capabilities down below. And I did a previous video on hormones, on the circulating hormones and how they get into the, the tissues through the bloodstream. And I'm gonna have that link down below. And also this ties into the metabolism of estrogen as well. So I'm gonna have those as a link below as well. So thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm answering an email and doing the research on all the circuit hormones and the metabolism of estrogen, the effects of DIM on testosterone. It all comes across to this binding protein called sex hormone binding globulin. Now, what is it? What is the deal with sex hormone binding globulin? Well, let's back it up a little bit. I did a previous video on circulating hormones, how the hormones circulate throughout the bloodstream and again to the target tissue. Now, when it comes to hormones, fat soluble hormones, you're looking at the, you're looking at the sex hormones and your thyroid horm hormone. And the best way to describe that is that your blood system is like, it's like a saline solution. While the thyroid and sex hormones are like oil. Okay, so oil and water don't necessarily mix. So what happens with their thyroid and sex hormones, it has to get on a protein carrier. And when it comes to sex hormone binding globulin, it's a glycoprotein, it's made in the liver, Predominantly it's made in the liver, but also it's made in other sites like the brain, the uterus, the placenta, and also to the testes. When it's made in the testes, if you're gonna do blood labs, it's called the androgen binding protein, APB. So for those who are doing research on uh, testosterone and how it's, how it's made and the testes, you're gonna come across this APB and that's the androgen binding protein. Okay, so in the previous video, I was talking about certain hormones that are when they circulate through the system, are they lipid-based or are they water-based? Water-based hormones like the aminos, peptides, so forth and so on, are just circulating throughout the bloodstream. But when it comes to lipid-based, which is non-water soluble, meaning that they don't like the water, it's like high, it's a lipid hormone, that's like oil, and you're floating through the bloodstream, which is mostly water. So you're mixing an oil and a water, and it just does, it just does a mix. So the lipid-soluble, hormones, mainly thyroid and androgens, they have to get on a bus, okay? It's a protein carrier. And when it comes to the testosterone and estrogen, the bus, it's kind of like they bring it to the target tissue and sometimes uh, the hormones can be loose, let out loosely or sometimes they're just bound in that bus and due to the conditions of you, sometimes those hormones will be let out and sometimes they won't. So when it comes to circulating hormones, Free testosterone, it's very low. You get about one or 2% free testosterone. And that means it's unbound. It just goes into the blood and it goes to the target tissue. But we have 54. A lot of it is bound to the serum albumin because serum albumin is a transport protein. And it's loosely bound, meaning that, okay, it gets on this bus, you got the seatbelt on, but when it gets to the target tissue, the seatbelt comes off and the hormone goes into the target tissue. And what it does, it meets, it meets up with the receptor site, much like a pen cap on top of a pen. However, we have this safety mechanism inside us and that's called sex hormone binding globulin. And it's exactly what it means, it binds to our sex hormones. However, we have 44% of sex hormone binding globulin, those hormones are tightly bound. That means if the bus gets to the area and the condition just doesn't seem right, it's not gonna let the hormones go, it's just basically gonna tie them, you know, tighten them down and they're gonna be bound, so they're not going to leave. It is a safety mechanism. The thing is, sex hormone binding globulin, the safety mechanism is, it limits the bioavailability of sex hormones because if, you're, if the conditions aren't correct, it's not gonna let the hormones out of the bus. 
Yeah, it will some, but it still wants to hold on to others just as a safety mechanism. So when it comes to sex hormone binding globulin, what it is is otherwise known as the availability protein because this modulates. It modulates the amount of testosterone your body tissues can use. Remember, if the conditions aren't right, you're not gonna do it. It's not gonna get off the bus. Now they vary, sex hormone binding globulins, they vary with males and females. With females, you're looking at about two times more of the sex hormone binding globulin levels than males, strictly because females, you bear child, and that's another video altogether. But what happens? So in certain conditions, if you have low levels, females, you're gonna have hyperandrogenism, meaning that I did a previous video, this is, you know, you get facial hair, you'll get a deepening of the voice, you'll be a little bit more, you know, mu muscle bound. In addition, if you have low levels, this could be one of the causations of endometrial cancer. For males, if you have low levels, what's gonna happen, the boat's gonna flip over and you're gonna increase your chances of having BPH, that's benign prostatic hypertrophy, due to the elevated levels of estrogens because elevated levels of estrogens cause problems with the prostate. So let's flip it over. Let's say you have high levels of sex hormone binding globulin, which in retrospect, it sounds great, but actually no. Because remember, it limits the bioavailability due to the conditions. So if you have, for males and females, if you have high, high levels of sex hormone, hormone binding globulin, that means that the bus is gonna lock it down. Oh no, you're not getting out. So what happens is that in both males and females, it increases the risk of vertebral fractures. Your bones have increased risk of fractures. Why? Because due to the low levels of hormones, remember estrogen and testosterone is needed to get in the calcium into the cell, into the bone. And then now you run the risk of osteopenia, osteoporosis, fracture risk. Okay, so sex hormone binding globulin could be your best friend or your worst enemy. So if you have high levels of sex hormone binding globulin, what's gonna happen? The bus keeps everything nice and bound. So your hormones are not gonna get off the bus. So you're gonna have decreased androgens. Let's flip it over. If you have low levels of sex hormone binding globulin, which kind of sounds great when it comes to the analogy, problem is you're gonna have high androgens. That sounds great, but again, you don't want too high or too low of any type of hormone because you want, a, you want it a moderate level. So when it comes to the affinity, binding affinity, so what affinity means is just the attraction, the connection. What is it most attracted to? Because there's a lot of hormones. The binding affinity of sex hormone binding globulin mostly goes from to DHT. DHT is a powerful, powerful hormone that with men, this produces the baldness, this produces the prostate issues. For females, the DHT, this is where you get the facial hair, the deepening of the voice and so forth and so on. So the binding affinity, the highest it's attracted to is DHT. It loves DHT, then testosterone, then estradiol, E2. So DHT, Again, it, that's five times has affinity than testosterone, which is great because you want, that, you want that DHT to be kept on the bust because you want to be safe. And it's 20 times the affinity as estradiol. So females, you're, you're in the safety zone because remember DHT, which how do we get DHT? It's a conversion of testosterone to DHT. Now the low affinity, low attraction comes to the estrione, E1, and the estriol E3, which is good. It's good, it has low attraction because again, when it comes to the females and pregnancies, this is where it kind of, the rules kind of change. Clinically, what does this mean? So when I'm working with my patients and I'm trying to get them better functional medicine, I'm doing my blood labs, yes, I wanna test those SHGV levels because that has a key component in how their body is working. And the ranges for, male, for females, I'm sorry, you're going to, I want, I'm looking for anywhere from 18 to 144 nanomoles per liter. Now again, that does look like a big range, but also too, a lot, of, a lot of pieces play a part in it. For males, you're looking at from 20 to 57 nanomoles per liter. You want to keep them more tightly, tightly bound. So what happens? So if you have high levels of sex hormone binding globulin, what's going to happen? It will bind to DHT and testosterone. So what's going to give you Remember the bus, high levels of SHGB, meaning that it's not letting this off the bus. So now what's going, going to happen is that you're going to have 
symptoms low level of low testosterone. For males, you're gonna have weight gain, depression, low libido, no motivation, no nothing, no nothing. Then what you're also gonna do, do for males, it's gonna flip it over because you're gonna have symptoms of high estrogens, which you don't want either. So what if you have the low levels of sex hormone binding globulin? Well, now you're gonna have more unbound free levels of testosterone. And that sounds great. Why? Because free testosterone, remember, you, it's unbound. There's, it's not cuffed. The boss is like, just go, just go, just go. But what's gonna happen, now you're gonna have symptoms of high testosterone, which kind of sounds good too, but you still wanna, you, you need to be in a, a range. So again, it's gonna be more aggression. You're gonna have acne, females, you're gonna have, uh, it's gonna be more, again, the conversion to DHT, facial hair, deepening of voice. And males, yes, that high testosterone does sound good, but the higher the testosterone, if it's not modulated, that's gonna spill over to DHT. Now, when I like to do the blood labs, I always do a, the, hormone, the hormonal panel, and I always wanna see where your sex hormone binding globulin levels are. Now, certain conditions will make you have high or low levels. Now, remember, if you have high levels of sex hormone binding globulin, you're gonna have low levels of testosterone and vice versa. So certain conditions will just right off the cuff give you high levels. Any type of high estrogen foods, lifestyle, soy, phytoestrogens, sugar, wheat, gluten, beer, all that will spike that sex hormone binding globulin, which was gonna to happen to do what? It's gonna give you low testosterone. Hyperthyroid, remember, thyroid hormones and sex hormones travel on the same bus because they're oil-based. Now, liver diseases, any type of liver disease bogs up the liver. The liver, I did a video with estrogen metabolism. The liver has a pathway to turn on hormones. And what's going to happen if you have any type of liver disease, what's going, you're going to have the aromatase overexpression, which will bleed over to DHT. Cirrhosis, again, any type of damage to the liver. Liver, liver health is very important. Caloric restricted diet, low protein diets will do this. Why? Because what's the main thing? It's a glycoprotein made in liver. All the transport proteins are made in the liver, so when I hear people having a low protein diet, I already know off the cuff that they're not doing good. Protein's good for you, especially for males and females. P uh, PTSD, PTSD will do it as well. Now, conditions that will give you low sex hormone binding globulin, which again, in turn, it's gonna have high testosterone. Typically, now this is typically due to low estrogen levels, low thyroid levels, and high insulin levels, off the cuff. If you have low estrogen, low thyroid, and high insulin, yeah, you're gonna have low sex hormone binding globulin. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. I'm working with a couple females right now. Yes, we're trying to get that under control because yeah, the sex hormone binding globulins are low, but the problem is high testosterone. And typically, what do they, what do they treat PCOS with? Metformin. Why? Because you want to control the insulin levels. But what does metformin do? It blocks the absorption of B vitamins. So then what happens? They get nummies and tingies in their fingers and toes. Obesity, hypothyroid. Hypothyroid, Hashimoto's, hypothyroid. Insulin resistance, insulin resistance. You're not a diabetic yet, but again, you're, you're becoming insulin resistant. So you're looking at, again, right here, high levels of insulin. Metabolic syndrome. You just have a bad, crappy diet. Okay, now when it comes to blood labs, I first and foremost, let's get the baseline. Let's do a full hormonal panel. Males, let's do a full hormonal panel. Females, let's do a, fe a full female hormonal panel. But I always want to include the markers of total testosterone, the free testosterone, and the sex hormone binding globulin markers. Those are the main indicators of how this, these are all tied together. In addition, remember, Sex hormones and thyroid hormones, they get transported throughout the body because they're lipid soluble and they work together. They're on the bus together. So a full thyroid hormone panel is very essential. A lot of doctors, they only test two markers, TSH, free T4 or free T3. No, we need to do a full panel because that tells us the whole story. The markers, total, free, T4, T3. Three, 
T3 uptake, the reverse T3, and especially very, very important, the antibody markers. Do you have an autoimmune disease? Are you suffering from Hashimoto's? 80% of hypothyroid uh, diagnoses are due to the fact that you have Hashimoto's. So what do we do off the cuff? What can we do today? Let's start today. First and foremost, diet and lifestyle changes. If you're carrying excessive weight, let's lose some weight. Let's change the diet. Let's get some weight loss to stabilize that insulin. Stress management. Control the stress, lower the cortisol. <laughs> Increased cortisol shuts down the thyroid and also too, it doesn't allow us to convert inactive vitamins to active vitamins, inactive hormones to active hormones. So with stress management, ashwagandha and rhodiola rosea are two awesome herbs. Now watch it if you're on, if you're on thyroid medication, you may want to vary the dosage. Cruciferous vegetables, I talk a lot about the liver detox pathway, clean up the liver. Cruciferous vegetables, the broccolis, the Brussels sprouts, the cabbage, things like that are phenomenal for the liver to help detox that pathway. Increase your protein. A lot of people are not taking in enough protein. Females, males, low protein diets are going to screw up your system anyways. Okay, so supplements. Magnesium, boron, vitamin D, zinc, fish oil, calcium, and boron. These are all essential supplements to help stabilize the system because remember when it comes to sex hormone binding globulin you need a certain range too high is going to mess you up too low is going to mess you up as well so i hope this helps please leave a comment down below and share this video and i'll see you in the next one be good hello everyone this is dr juad hey it's over the last couple years my youtube channel has grown tremendously and i can only appreciate it the viewers who subscribe now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button to get the first up-to-date videos, or you could always Google my name, Dr. Janan Jawad, and you could go to my JDoc Real Minute page. Again, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get the most up-to-date videos, and thanks everybody who's watching. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you.